Welcome to this presentation on the automatic detection of a plane of interest from a 3D ultrasound volume. I first would like to thank GE for PhD funding and NVIDIA for the GPU used in this research. The plane of interest is referred to by clinicians as the C-plane and is the plane of shortest distance between the structure of the symphys pubis, SP, which in this cartoon is roughly by the pubic bone, and the levator ani muscle, which is roughly by the pelvic floor muscle towards the coccyx. And this plane is the plane of minimal height of dimensions. So the levator hiatus, which is this red dotted line, is very important and it's a biomarker used to diagnose pelvic floor disorder. Identifying this plane is all done manually and they manipulate a volume using 4D view software, which is from GE. And this can take a clinician two minutes onwards, depending on their own experience, patient pathology and quality of an ultrasound. During one exam, they find the C-plane a minimum of three times at rest, contraction and valsalva, and it's very time consuming. So automating this, there's a high clinical need for it. The pipeline we presented is as follows. We input a ultrasound volume into a pre-trained CNN regression model, which identifies the SP and LAM extreme coordinates from the ultrasound volume. We do some simple post-processing to identify the vector between the two. And as we are automating this clinical procedure, we follow clinical guidelines. So we also know another vector that the C-plane must adhere to. So we can now find the final vector using cross-product calculation. And we now have three orthogonal vectors that define the C-plane. We can then sample our 2D plane at the midpoint between the symphys pubis and the levator ani muscle. And then we get our 2D C-plane from a 3D volume. In order to train the CNN regression model, we use a data set of 25 ultrasound volumes and corresponding ground truth data, which consists of SP and LAM extreme coordinate distance maps, which can be shown in this figure here. We use a multitask CNN regression approach to learning and we validate on 100 unseen ultrasound volumes. In order to gauge the performance of our pipeline, we decide to look at the two metrics, angular difference and Euclidean distance. So angular difference is how far our plane is in rotation terms compared to a gold standard and Euclidean distance is how far in space they are at midpoint positions. In order to get this gold standard we ask our expert clinician Laura to identify the C-plane manually on all 100 volumes using 4D view GE software. We then asked her to identify the C-plane again on a subset of volumes a month later to get intra rate of variability and then we asked another clinician to identify the C-plane manually to get inter rate variability. And what we found was, is that our automatic approach, the blue box plot, actually lies within inter rate variability for both metrics, suggesting that it should be clinically accepted. Other metrics we decided to look at to see whether our result is clinically acceptable or not is we developed a type of Turing test, a visual Turing test, where we ask a clinician to blindly rate two different images, one that was automatic and one from the golden standard. And what we found surprisingly is that the clinician actually identified the automatic result to be better performing than the golden standard for a selection of volumes. They were asked to rate the quality of the seaplane and the position of it in the volume. As well as this, we asked the clinician to segment the left hiatus in all planes, so all gold standard and automatic inter and intra fan planes, and we calculate the horse of distance between these segmentations. And what we found was that our automatic approach actually lies within inter and intra rate variability. Finally, the time taken was reduced from roughly 120 seconds to 20 seconds, showing that we speed up this process, saving clinicians time. Just to summarise, we found that our results were within inter-rate variability for all metrics. We dramatically reduced the time by roughly 100 seconds. Our result we believe to be interpretable as we follow the current clinical guidelines and workflow. We just automate certain sections of it. And this method is also easy to adapt. We've already added on segmentation of left hiatus and we want to go further to even diagnose left hiatus as unhealthy or healthy in future work. So thank you very much for listening and your attention. There'll be a demonstration at 1525 and I look forward to seeing you there.